Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be looking at how to do some uh, fun stuff with assembler and the uh, ZOS um, capabilities. Uh, but before we get there, um, I want to pick up on something I put in my latest uh, video, which is um, I hope that YBM is, uh, is among the watchers and listeners of this channel and in uh, that, would, that would be nice and if IBM is listening uh, let me launch an appeal again here and that is please do release MVS XA to the uh, mainframe uh, enthusiast community and even MV VM XA would be very nice and the reason is that uh, you've been very IBM has been very kind has given us MVS 3.8 and we can also use VM 370 because those are in the open um, in the in the public domain um, but they're very strict because they're 24 bit and um, and we've, we've taken those systems as far as we can and, and we've added TCP IP uh, to MBS uh, 3.8 and we, we make the systems go as far as as nobody would have ever imagined on the other hand 24 bit is a bit restrictive um, especially when we want to get a, a GCC compiler a good C compiler into the system there's no Rex in MBS 3.8 and so the appeal that I'm launching here today to IBM is please do release MBS XA and VM XA to the community um, most of the viewers of this channel are in the age group of 29 to 35 um, so that you know there's absolutely interest uh, by younger people to learn uh, about the mainframe we want uh, IBM, just like everybody else, wants a younger generation to take over uh, the amazing work that has been done uh, to bring ZOS, uh, ZBM to where it is today. Um, so we have the young people watching this channel and, and, and we have an amazing community of uh, contributors. Um, and so if you gave us um, uh, MVS XA with 31-bit uh, capability and of course also the 31-bit uh, COBOL and hopefully also the PL1 optimizer compiler, you'll see I have the amazing things that are gonna happen and you see the enthusiasm that's gonna come out of this and you'll see that um, it, it can make a change um, for IBM, um, for IBM's mainframe division. And uh, if you look at the enthusiast uh, community around OpenVMS and HP has been very uh, generous in granting uh, licenses of the enthusiast uh, community, IBM could do the same. I don't think, uh, MBS XA has any commercial value anymore to IBM. Um, it's not running on any of the hardware that you still support and, and sell, um, but it will make a huge difference um, to your fans and to the people who want to know more about the mainframe. So, um, uh, you know, just, just uh, as an appeal here for the community, um, by the community to IBM, I hope you're listening and uh, I hope you'll continue to work with our community to uh, to drive uh, more and more amazing things for for the mainframe. That's, that's it. So that's that's the end of my build. Today we're going to be looking at how uh, you have an assembler program start a job through the internal reader of M of ZOS. As you remember, I got access from Preston. Uh, uh, one of the community members who's running this ZOS system, he gave me a TSO login on the system and uh, MVS and ZOS have something called an internal reader, which is a reader, um, like a, a, a card reader, but it's all virtual, all inside the operating system. If you write a JCL script into a stream, into the internal reader, then it will get executed. And so um, my idea was to use the capability and have an assembler program um, right into that internal reader and launch uh, just a simple job. I think it will be a cool trick and in, and maybe by watching me uh, write the assembler program to do that, we can all learn something and I'm sure there's gonna be a few surprises on the way. So let's get first started with uh, how um, how to how to use the internal reader. And so, um, uh, what, sorry. So um, the way to, I, took some notes here. So the way to do it is to have uh, a data definition card and call it sys out. And then uh, you can also leave this out and then internal reader. And if you have anything that writes to this DD card, this data definition card, it will go to the internal reader. So it really, it's really very simple. And, and so we're gonna use this 
to create a JCL which um, compiles an assembler program which then uh, writes to the internal reader and starts an assemble uh, job. That's the, that's the plan here. Um, I have a library here with lots of uh, assembler programs. Um, I'm going to uh, submit, I'm going to call it like this. And let's put this here in the meantime. Uh, recovery warrant. Okay, so we have that there. Now um, let's go select the job. Um, I have an assembler, an assembler um, program um, example here. And we're going to put it back here again in the submit that I just created. Oops. Okay. Um, oh no. Uh, you can see here there's one uh, dash missing. Okay, so this is going to be uh, a for assembler, message class H. Um, region equals 100 um, class equals A. And then we'll need this. Uh, we invoke the high level assembler procedure. And um, we're going to say here uh, where the sys in is. So this we don't need this. Um, yeah, we'll do it in 24 bit mode because we're going to use QSAM to write to the internal reader here. And QSAM, as far as I know, is only 24 bit uh, to this day. Um, so let's do it like this this library. That should all be fine. Um, we don't need this. Um, we do need this more shakes. Um, as a sub, it's going to be our source code there. Um, and we're going to put in a dump um, capability. And then we're going to say this here uh, in this place. Um, okay. You just put it like that. So now uh, when the assembler program opens up this file for output, a G, uh, LDD, it will write to this. Um, to this uh, internal reader. So that's it. Um, we can do sysprint. Okay. So this should, in theory, already work uh, to assemble the program. There's really not much to that. So the submit is the job for the JCL, and now we're going to have to open up ASM sub the assembly program. So for that, we'll take um, any good example. Uh, high assembler, highlight assembler. Um, do we have anything that writes out to output? Not this one. There's old programs I wrote a while ago. Let's see if we have, yeah, here we have an output. Um, okay, so let's copy all this. We have it totally done. ASM sub. We're gonna call it ASM sub. Print no gen. Um, what I do here is I put the name of the program here, so we have it. If there's a dump, I can see the name of the program. Um, uh, 
Which one was it? <laughs> um, I think that was it. We're done. Um, um, yeah. We just have the. Let's just put it to use this. Uh, Well, this is not a good one. I need to find a better one. Yeah, okay. That's, uh, that's what I was looking for. Uh, redone. Okay. So now, um, SM sub. Uh, we go down here. And we insert. Insert 40 lines. Okay, so we have now the skeleton of, a, of an assembler program. Um, this is the save area. What's happening here is that we start with this program. That's a C section code section. We use um, re register 15 as the base register, uh, since the um, S370 is a, is a base and displacement kind of architecture. We have here the save area where we save the registers and then the chain that we establish for so that we can when we get called when we return we go back to the same place that's a convention um, and then we drop register 515 which we use just for this part here and we now start using uh, register 12 um, okay begin yeah so we we establish addressability here back up here and we open only out BCD, okay, for output. Open output file, and in the output file, that's the definition of the output file. Um, it's gonna be with the format FB, Record length has to be 80 because that's JCL. We're going to be writing out DD and partitioned uh, sequential. Um, so that's the way to write an internal reader. As far as the assembler uh, is concerned, it's just writing to a file, but we know that the file is really the internal reader who's listening. You could call it a listener in the Unix world. Um, and so that's what we're opening here when we open up. Um, these uh, DCB. So then we don't have any reading of records. Um, what we're going to have instead is okay. Let me just say print JCL. Print JCL. Okay. So. Um, Following for internal reader. Um, so now we don't need any of this because we can delete. Um, so what we need to do now is um, have an out area. We'll call it, oh, is there an out area here? Yeah, we have an out area. Which is just a buffer, and um, and then we're going to have um, something like this line one. You see, eighty. Um, but we're going to put in the JCL. And we don't need the in area because we're not reading anything. Okay, um, out area needs to be only 80 characters long. Okay, so um, okay, 
So we have this so far. Now uh, we just repeat this about 12 times. And we're going to have um, uh, more sheets. Uh, internal reader job and the whole line basically um, we're going to copy it from somewhere else but you get the idea um, then we have um, we have uh, step one exit program equals I E I can never remember the name of this utility this is just an empty program. Uh, it's a program that gets started and immediately exits again, but you can use this anytime you need to run a job, for instance, to allocate a data set, a data set or delete a data set when you need to do something with JCL itself, but you don't have a program to run, use this one. Um, we'll find the exact spelling of that uh, in a while. Um, um, and then we'll do uh, sys print is out equals this then we'll say just in case of event sys event sys out um, and um, and I think that's about it well, we don't really need anything else um, if we do so now we have to change line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5 and this one we can delete okay so um this looks good right now except for the yeah okay and copy regs that should be fine it finds the registers equates should be in the same partition data set um, and now all we need to do is move um, we can do a loop uh, but I don't know how many lines we're going to have maybe it's going to be more than five lines but for now oh, um, for now uh, what we're going to do is It's not complete yet, we just need to finish. Um, work, um, This IEFBR14. Okay, so IEF. Yeah, I had it right. Um, so this alone should work already. Um, 
So now we could just say um, um, MVC out area line one. Repeat that. And then we copy each. See what I'm doing here? The put, put, um, Put is not correct yet, but um, we have to say what to put in uh, to be. But we're almost there, okay. Um, let me check something. Was it there was something I wanted to check? Yep, um, you just do it like this. And then uh, this one's we don't need. And at this time, once we close it out DCB, this should go directly to the uh, to the uh, internal reader. But there's something I read about uh, buffering. Um, so let me see what I wrote down here. Um, yeah, in the DCB. Okay. This looks like it should work. Um, so let's go back to uh, labs and what was it called? Submit. Let's see how bad this bombs out. Um, JCLR, of course. Uh, I think it's this one. Uh, what is this? Yes, high level assembler. Oops, you can see here. Uh, procedure that was expanded using system unidentified operation field in 19. Is that oh I know why okay um, let's try this again 372 oops something went very bad here so okay undefined symbol OR15 he didn't find the registers um, that's simple to solve. Um, I have the registers equates here. We just copy all of that. And then um, we go to ASM sub, sub and we can put um, delete this. Here. 
Um, okay. This uh, looks better now. Yeah, let's give it a run. Okay, um, submit. Mushix A, job 373. Hmm, where is it? I don't know. Ended. Uh, oh, it took so it took a while because it was writing in a bend. Um, and that's good, so people who've never seen COS uh, bends, uh, bend dumps, I can see, okay, 0C1, reason code 1, um, and address 7000, offset 00. zero. Instruction length was 2 bytes. So let's go and look what's wrong here. Um, This looks like undefined. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think I know what the what the problem is. Let's just uh, go here and open this so we don't have to. There were only five lines, and I'm writing a seventh line, and that obviously is no good. So that's why you have 0C1 as the, uh, it points to a, a, a to an empty, to a non-existing uh, address. Okay. Uh, then um, the other thing I saw here is that uh, this is not proper JCL. Uh, uh, so uh, something missing here. DD the definition I saw that uh, I was complaining a bit about that um, and this is just Okay, so um, this should go through now. Um, I don't see a reason uh, why. Um, this looks good. Um, you know, one more thing I was thinking is this could be, I have a video in this channel um, called System Programming for MVS 3.8, where I um, install a scheduler. Um, however, that scheduler is only able to issue commands at the console. Um, this capability here will be a very nice addition to it. Uh, I'll link to that video below the, in the description below this video. Um, but this capability here to submit to the internal reader will be perfect to have that to extend the scheduler that we looked at in that video uh, to also be able to launch jobs um, not just console commands uh, since it's just so simple to do um, and um, this is all wrong comments here so i will have to um, Okay, so now the comments make sense. Um, this all looks good. Um, I don't see anything wrong. So um, let's go and submit this again. Let's see what comes out. Uh, so A is the original JCL and here Moshix A and Moshix I is going to be the JCL uh, submitted by the assembler program. 
um, that's job 406 um, I'll disband it again so to job ID descending um, so it did launch both let's see the ones the one that was launched by the assembler program this one fine this went through just fine uh, that's perfectly condition code zero zero so we got this executed so we got the job done there's still somewhere a a uh, for a zero c1 which means um, uh, illegal instruction um, somewhere here seven eight d zero zero I'm sure I could find it. Um, I know since we since we did um, issue the the uh, JCL from the assembly program. I know we went through it here. If we were the single step, um, I know we went through this instruction, the close, and the close went fine. I guess um, I would say that something went wrong here. And. C is the base register, this one. You see everywhere there is a C. This is because we use register 12 as the base register, which is C. Um, and then 0114. Let's see what's in 0114. That's just the save area. So I don't know why it's not we are saving pre-save save area hmm. this all looks fine I don't really understand why it depends we could put in a uh, snap um, in this assembly program to issue a snap uh, print line to tell us what the status is of all the registers just before we execute this uh, instruction because I'm quite sure that it's either this instruction or this is causing it um, so I can see something I'm setting up the base registers here in the wrong way Mm, we can try to fix this uh, I don't want to leave the video with, I mean it's working but it could be I could make, make it work better um, let's just delete all of this and because what I'm doing here is a non-standard way to start the program so that I could have this in the dump at the very beginning, which uh, we're finding out now it's not really that useful. Um, so let's delete all of this. And okay, and I also delete all of this. And then we delete also all of this. And we'd have a normal way to initialize the assembly program. Um, I can just take it from any. Um, yeah. We just need a save area. to get the save area definition here. I just don't want to type all this every time. Um, okay. One more thing that really bugs me is that we have the 
harmonious and misaligned. Okay, um, so and then we need to also close perfectly. Um, and we do this here um, at the end. Uh, ah, uh, it's here. Okay. Um, this looks a little bit more um, standard now. So we open up here, we save our registers, and then we wrote uh, the save area um, into register 13. What we've saved, the, the registers come from back into register 13, restore, um, and return to the caller. Um, this should work better now. Um, save area, let's see if I mentioned everything correctly, yes. Um, um, let's copy this as well, makes for nicer code. Okay, so this starts to look better. Um, why don't we try this out? Um, job 48 committed, uh, started. And this went through perfectly. Um, why each time? Uh, because I started yet another viewer. Anyway, so um, yeah, this went perfect. I had a problem there with the with the setup of the of the registers at entry, and probably that was um, oh, surely this is what led to the. Okay, there's no errors here whatsoever, no warnings, and um, and then let's see, yeah, and this also went through perfectly. Condition code zero, so we got it licked. Um, uh, Sometimes when you try new things, uh, you just miss out one tiny little thing in assembler and then you get this C zero C1. All the zero C, uh, C1, C2, C3, C4, C7 means that you have something, uh, you're doing something wrong with addressing or you're, um, you're running something um, uh, in, the, um, in the wrong order. But we got it licked. Um, this, uh, we accomplished what we wanted to do. Uh, we have this assembly program that launches, so this JC had launches an assembly program, and then the assembly program here um, um, is, um, is launching another assembler, another JCL, another job, uh, which in this case just does nothing at all, but we could put here in anything we wanted to do. Uh, so that's it, so we got this done. Um, I will post both uh, links to GitHub, where we'll have both this uh, uh, the JCL and the assembly program, and I will also link to the um, video I made uh, about nine months ago. To be correct, on July fourth, two thousand and seventeen, as I was riding on the airplane, um, uh, or after the airplane ride, uh, where I install a um, a scheduler and so uh, because I think this would be a very nice addition to add to the schedule maybe I'll make a video about that anyway I, I hope you had fun watching me uh, getting this to run um, I did not in any way prepare for this I just had the idea sat down turned the video recorder at uh, the screen recorder on and we got it uh, to where it is now um, as I said at the beginning of this video this uh, video commemorates uh, the work of uh, dr. John Ehrman at IBM uh, in Palo Alto he is the one who, uh, who, who uh, he was not the main developer, but he was the one who pushed the high-level assembler uh, uh, 
to to uh, get done and he wrote a very nice book about it that I uh, would, would advise you to read. It's very thick but if you go through that book you know Assembler and um, he just passed away yesterday um, in his Palo Alto home after a battle with cancer and um, some certainly uh, somebody uh, I've never met him but uh, he had the reputation of being a quiet uh, very gentle man um, liked by everybody and I just exchanged emails with him uh, once um, so may you rest in peace um, anyway thank you for watching uh, please, if you like this video please press on the thumbs up button um, please consider subscribing to the Moshik's mainframe channel to get notifications of future videos and see you soon on this channel Bye.